Volleyball. November, the postseason picture coming into focus. And these two teams are big time players in that spot. And the first serve from Bianca Bertolino is an ace. And the Yellow Jackets take the first point. Bertolino, the best server for this Georgia Tech squad, leading the ACC in aces, getting her first one of the match. She leads the ACC, as you said, in aces. Good attempt that time from Iko Jones. Outside hitter. Mendez punches it forward, and she gets it to drop. That's one of the biggest challenges for Coach Michelle Collier. He's finding a way to score in this Louisville defense. Number 10 in the ABCA poll. Highest ranking this season for the Jackets, who have won four straight. Pekran Kong, PK, as she's known the little locker room. And Mendez goes cross court, a good dig that time. And it's kept alive by Pimentel. A lunging effort. You tease the defense is Keeling. We're seeing it early. And Obozi gets the kills. It's wide of the pin. Georgia Tech is so tough to play in this O'Keefe gym. Coach Danny Busman Kelly, one of the best to perform as a coach, taking over this program. I'm a huge fan of Coach DBK. She's doing a great job. Just final four to the championship match last year. Everybody loves her if you know her. Cross court feed, big swing from Jones. Now Scott goes to DeBeer and she plants it cross court. Anna DeBeer, fully healthy this year, Keeley, and she has been on a roll as she walks back so cool and calm after taking that rip. She, her precision and her attack is what I enjoy watching. And now she'll serve. Senior from Louisville, Kentucky, from the Assumption School. Except this time comes from the Libro Scott. <laughs> and what a block, Anna Bozy. Welcome to it. Anna Bozy making the close. That's just extra effort getting the close, trying to go deep on that for a distance. Fan, or teammates are loving it. About five weeks ago, she had played just two matches in her career with the injury to Liv Mogridge, Tech star middle blocker. She was forced into the lineup, and she's now played in 10 consecutive matches as Louisville picks up the point on the kill from PK. You can see the strategy for Louisville, get the middles going, and then for Georgia Tech, working a lot of right side contacts on that assist. Elena Scott serving. Otene on the receive, she'll get the swing. And up into the rafters, a battle at the net, and Deandra Pierce notches a point for the Yellow Jackets. Keeley, we're in the early stages of this match. What are your keys to the match as we get a look at the replay here? Good effort. This one, you just have to go put keys to the game. If you're Louisville, you just have to try to get that middle going and slow down Georgia Tech's pin attack. We'll get those keys in just a moment. Block, middle, pressy, point, Cardinals. Let's take a look at those keys, Keely. Come out swinging. Louisville knows that they can get momentum early, and you see that middle attack going and out defend Georgia Tech on their home court. For Georgia Tech, slow down the outside attack between Looper and DeBeer. They're powerful, they're aggressive, and then take that service risk when you can. And you saw the first one right out the bat, and here we just saw an ace on Otene. But these are two aggressive serving teams, very confident in what they can do on the service line. Both coaches have mentioned how much time they spend in practice taking aggressive but calculated risk on that serve. Well, it's paid off for them inside of matches. Louisville first in the ACC and aces percent. Georgia Tech third. As Alfredo Magnon gets her first swing tonight. Good dig on the swing from Looper. And Magnon goes, line is kept alive by Louisville. <laughs> a last gasp for the Cardinals, and that flips a point right there, Keeley. This is what I talked about in the open. Every kill will be earned. These are the most scrappy defensive teams in the ACC. Just when you think the ball is going down, Michael Jones laying out, keeping the rally going. 
Ellie Glock doing her part as well from the center position. And Michelle Collier considered challenging, was at least lobbying. And she'll keep it in her pocket for now, nearly going. Ico Jones, grad student from Kingston, Jamaica. And Pierce thundering it down, but it's kept alive by Louisville. Great dig from the back row. <laughs> and that time tomorrow, oh, today will not be denied. Let's go. High fly and swing. Great job, Otene, on this right side. You can see the strategy out of system. Nice high ball. When your outside hitter plays right side, you can still give it because two years ago, Otene was the right side. Rolling over the tape. Glock behind her. Looper long. Point jackets. I mean, a looper was about a foot over that block. That's a high jumping attacker. We knew you can do it, but it's even more fun to see you live. Yeah, preseason All-AC selection, one of several for the Cardinals. Fanning just five foot nine, but you saw her ups. This time on the slide, it's Cressy, which is blocked. And the Jackets can't keep it alive as Pierce had her hands on it, but it falls on Tech's side of the net. Point for Louisville. Wow, that's one. For if you're Georgia Tech, you just want back. Bertolino had the perfect setup, just a little late for that ball to drop on Georgia Tech's side with Pierce on the This is Charity Looper serving, a transfer from UCLA. And she notches an ace. That's when you know you have complete control in your game. Looper took that front row attack, took it long, and then comes back and gets an ace. Complete control of what she can do. And one of the reasons Coach Buzzboom Kelly brought her into the program this year, Keely, she felt like they lacked experience from their outsides. They wanted to get a proven competitor at the college level. Afedo Manyang's attack is ruled to be off the hands, point Georgia Tech. And Coach Busboom Kelly is headed over to the scores table, grabs her challenge card, and she will challenge the call of hands. And it's obvious to tell in that quick replay that we got that the blocker's arms were way past the attack. So the only possible person to touch the ball was Jones, but the ball touched the floor before Jones was able, able to arrive. So Scott Lowry, our lower official reviewing the tape, his wife Suzanne is in the stand tonight above the net. And Kelly, what are you seeing here? So the, the ball touched the net, which created motion. So a couple things you look for when you get this type of view, you go, okay, did the blockers touch the net? And the blockers, that was clearly a clean block. They stayed on their side. And then Manyang taking that rip, nowhere close to where the blockers' arms were. So in your assessment, this will be overturned. Correct. His point is going to Louisville. Well, hopefully this... Delay won't last too long as now Scott Lowry has the call. Last time these two teams met, it was in this building in November. And they had a 33-minute delay because of the playing surface as this call is overturned. It was so humid here in O'Keefe Gymnasium. Georgia Tech had gone up two sets to none, and before they began the third set, uh, Louisville was concerned that the surface wasn't safe, and there was a lot of slipping and sliding going on that night. And so they took half an hour to sort of air out the gym and dry it up, and Louisville wound up winning the next three sets to take the match in five. And the difference is, rest assured, Louisville fans, there is a new air conditioning system in Oak Cube Gym. I bring my jacket because it gets cold <laughs> in here. So that will not happen again, what you saw last year. So tied up at eight, and now Deandra Pierce, the transfer from Texas, she was on the team that downed Louisville in the national championship last December. Now playing for Georgia Tech. And Cressy blocked by Bertolino. <laughs> I mean, how fun is this, Wiley? So Bertolino, you know, she doesn't get high, but she's always in the right spot. One of the best blockers for Georgia Tech. Taking that cross-court shot, jumping in. Even if it was a net swing, Bertolino was in the correct spot. Here's his serve. Blocked to De Beer. As Luisa Suarez has checked in at center. And Afedo Manyang. She had a big match last Sunday against Syracuse, 10 kills, a season high for her, and she's earned some more opportunities here in this rotation, hasn't she? That's right, and that set delivery was from her middle peers. That'll get your team going. 
Here's from Austin, Texas. Block to Cressy. Oh, right atop the 10 foot line. I'm giving two claps for that pass from Elena Scott, sticking it on the money for Glock to go right back to Cressy. Watch his pass. Setter doesn't have to move. Those are the best type of passes. And then for the put away, beautiful shot. Well, the first thing we asked Coach Busboom Kelly about was the work of Ellie Glock is now we have Brigida Petrenko coming in to serve. And she serves it long. She'll so likely sub back out, but for Glock, you know, the challenge for Coach Busboom Kelly was for her to be more creative, reverse the flow a little more often, and that's a good sign so far, isn't it? Yes, and I'm, I love the coaching style of both DBK, Busman Kelly, and Collier do a great job. And I think I'm the only one in this gym that can say I played against both coaches in our careers. So the level of knowledge that both these coaches have is incredibly impressive. And their ability to lead players, not only in the game, but as people. I'm huge fans of these two coaches. Georgia Tech running that 6-2. Bella D'Amico will come in to serve as Suarez heads to the bench. Senior captain for the Jackets. Sure have to receive the attack. Mendez. Kept alive. To Beer. Wow, what a shot. A tough angle. She catches hands, Keely. Beautifully done. De Beer knew that she was going to have four hands in front of her, taking that high, deep swing going into the hands. Nicely done. She missed the first 12 ACC matches last year with an injury of nearly two months. She came back healthy for the NCAA tournament, had 61 kills in Louisville's first ever run of the championship game. She had nine in the loss to Texas. D'Amico tight to the net, goes to Bozy, and she's got the kill. Anna Bozy again. That was one of the questions, Keely, was how did the middles perform in this match, particularly the Georgia Tech side where they're down with Mokrich. And you can see Georgia Tech, they know Louisville scouted, oh, Georgia Tech doesn't run their middle often. You're seeing a different type of offensive style today. That's hard to stop. Bertolino with a jump serve, and that pass right at the net, and it's a point for the Jackets. That's one if you're a middle, and the balls have been slightly tight and overpass. You just got to take a swing on. Hopefully, the call will be called a back row center contact. So 13 10, Georgia Tech with a modest advantage as we approach the midway <laughs> point. And man, talk about velocity. And how about the response? Ika Jones says, you know what? I got some pop, too. Oh, and that is how you respond. Up the gut with your grad students saying, hey, I have experience on my side. Just give me the ball. No active ACC player, Keeley, has played in more matches than Ika Jones. So yes, experience and then some. Plenty of veteran savvy. Pimentel looking to O today. And she hits her spot, cross court, just barely beating the ACC's Diggs leader, Elena Scott. What you're, you're seeing right now is the pressure's off Otene. Georgia shifted, Georgia Tech shifted to a two-setter offense, so it, that puts a right side in the front row with Otene two rotations. Nicely done. Block going to Looper, and she collects the point. Oh, oh Looper, sky jumper. It's like you want to... You want to look over and say, I bet your feet are at the bottom of that net. Getting up, she can hang with any big block in front of her. She's picked up her first kill tonight. Closing in on 700 in her career. Otene swatted, rejected. Michael Jones. What a wall you're seeing in front. You have Jones, 6'2", getting that set up, and Cressy, her middle, with a close. If that ball set just a little under, Michael Jones all over that setup. Elena Scott serving. D'Amico goes to Mendez. The freshman from Brazil takes a big swing. Looper. Oh and just inside the line, point Louisville. You know, there are a few players that when you see live, they're just as impressive as video. Looper is one of them, taking high swings and extreme angles this season, averaging close to three kills per set on the outside, and then adds her back row game as well. Complete overall player you've seen in Looper. She led UCLA in kills per set last year, all Pac-12 honorable mention. 
and transferred to Louisville trying to bring that well-rounded game. That was such a focus for Coach Buzz Boom Kelly. As looks like uh, Paola Pimentel is getting a little assistance from Carla Gilson, Associate AD of Sports Medicine and longtime trainer for Florida Tech Volleyball. Close to 30 years of service here at the Institute for Carla. D'Amico, and a little miscommunication as Otene just has to pop it back. And what a dig from Bertolino keeps it alive, and she has to pass it over a free ball for the cards. And a block, Deandra Pierce toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kara Cressy. And we have played to the first time out tonight. We build a top 10 showdown, and this is looking like a heavyweight fight as we reach the midway point of the first set. Bills in the early going crossed over the 1,000 kill mark in her career last weekend. You've seen right next to her is Man Young, so that puts Georgia Tech in that three hitter offense, that 6 2. Gives her a lot of more looks, it seems to work that she hasn't seen all season. And now the freshman Eloisa Suarez serving for the Yellow Jackets. A great dig from Pimentel in the Jones swing. Otene goes soft. Glock goes back to Jones, and this time she beats the block. Point Louisville. Jones was like, okay, you got me line. Let me go ahead and rip this seam. I'm going to stay away from Pimentel down the line. That's the way to change your shot and find a way to come up with the point. Heiko Jones, who's a four-time All-ACC performer, now in her fifth season. And that is ruled to think be a net violation there against the Yellow Jackets, or uh, either a fall over the line. Shelly so Collier getting clarification. So if you come under the net, you're allowed to come under if it doesn't e interfere with the play. In that time, Suarez was coming under, and that's a hard call because you're like, it probably would have interfered with that blocker. She pulled her legs back, but I'm, I'm counting that point for Louisville on that one. And point Louisville on the double contact. And the tough serving for Ica Jones continues. And the Yellow Jackets want a timeout as the Cardinals have come out of the media timeout with a 3-0 run. And we were talking earlier in our open about how this, this could be a match that plays a large role in who wins the ACC championship this year, and that's really no different than any other year. The last three seasons, Louisville has won 46 of 48 ACC matches, Pitt 43-5, and five, and then there's some distance there between the Panthers and the Yellow Jackets, but Georgia Tech has solidified themselves as that third team. It's been pretty pretty fun watching all of these matchups, and there's no easy team in the ACC. So you know you're like the Miami of the world, Florida State. They're going to play their best match when they come in and play you. And you actually see Georgia Tech today. The pressure's off. They're playing better volleyball than we've seen in a lot of matches this year because they're not carrying that load of being the top dog, but today they're the underdog. You saw that note, Georgia Tech 1-8 against the likes of Pittsburgh and Louisville. That win was against Pitt last year. So the Cardinals leading 17 to 15 here. The Jackets have already taken the floor. Meanwhile, Louisville keeping their huddle. And it looks to be associate head coach Dan Meske in his seventh season leading that conversation. Keely, this has been I'd say the best crowd we've seen this year for Georgia Tech. I love it. I bet all of these people, even season ticket holders, because sometimes season ticket holders come to half of the games they get their tickets but this one everybody showed up for a match top 10. And Ica Jones who's hitting a career best 288 this year close to 500 the last couple of matches she'll continue to serve. Suarez oh today Gosh. side out. I am loving this for Otene, just a seam. She hasn't had it all season long because Georgia Tech's been, been very pin dominant, not having that 6-2 right side. Otene with this seam, she's gonna put it away. And now she serves. Looper found the soft spot between the two rows. So if you're a young player watching this, Looper is listed as 5'9". If you work on your jumping game, and Looper is special, getting up and over, you're able to work different shots. So don't be worried so much about your height if you can make it up in your jump. 
Her father was a terrific college athlete as well. Rushed for 1,000 yards back in 1993 for Stephen F. Austin as a running back. Bertolino kept alive. Block puts it in a pretty good spot there, and it goes off the roof. Point Louisville. That's a pretty impressive set for Ellie Glock headed towards the student section. On the money like she was in system. Glock running off the court delivering a beautiful back bump set to Jones. She has been named AC Setter of the Week three times in the last four weeks. It's a power from Looper on the serve. Pierce, little moment hesitation. And they're going to rule the point to Louisville. That's hard. Pierce had the hang time, but not so much the hand connection to give that ball enough snap, top spin to drop in. Yeah, so it goes long. Another timeout called by Georgia Tech and the Cardinals. Boy, it has made quite the difference. They have won seven of the last eight points since that media timeout. And you reflect back to that looper dig when Glock was running off and then able to still keep the ball in play for a back row attack. This is what makes Louisville so special. In system, out of system, they can get kills with their offensive powerhouse players. And this is a team, like we said, they've won 46 in the last 48 ACC matches. They're number three in the country. They're not gonna be intimidated by this environment. And this is hardly their first test this year, Keely. They have taken on a ton of ranked opponents. Wazoo, Penn State, a five-setter against Stanford in which they won the first two sets but couldn't find that third. And then sweeping Pitt, a team they will see again later this month, and then they'll host Georgia Tech in the final week of the season. What you love about Coach Buzzboom Kelly, she won a national championship as a player at Nebraska. She knows you have to load heavy in your preseason to prepare you for the later postseason when you hit bracket play to know what's to come and show your weaknesses early so you know what to prepare for. So I love how she loaded up preseason as she gets ready for what's to come with postseason. And clearly Louisville's in prime position to, to be a, a top, top seed in the NCAA tournament. So we asked Coach Busboom Kelly, all right, you got a month left here. Obviously you want to win the ACC, but from a from a team standpoint, what are your goals for these next four weeks heading into the NCAA tournament? And she said, well, two things. One, we want to be a little more creative offensively. And secondly, we need our block to improve. And I think, to me, we've seen some of that, especially on the offensive creativity side in this first set today. And one thing Louisville can always rely on in their, is their serving game and defensive game. So you saw Jones when she was in the front row got a nice solid block. But you, when you have Elena Scott digging your left back, she can cover like 10 foot line to corner. That's how much court space she has for range defensively. It's Charity Looper serving. And Suarez trying to fear Pierce, and this time she doesn't need to hit it in court because she got the hands. I'm loving the growth that you're seeing with the setter middle connection for Georgia Tech. Just slowly but surely all season long trying to get the connection going. Coach Collier and staff has worked really hard with both setters to try to see what makes each middle successful. Now Liz Patterson, service special for the Yellow Jackets is on. Back row, Looper from the Rafters. And it's just long, go. They'll say there were hands. So the point does go to Looper and the Cardinals. And right away after a blocking touch is called, I always look at the blocker's body language toward their head coach, because if you know you touched it, you're looking over at your head coach saying, no coach, don't use your challenge card. And that's what you saw Bozy do with Coach Collier. So Louisville gets the point. 22-17 our score. And Briggy Petrenko serving. Her 220th career ace. That is the most among all active players in Division I volleyball. Pretty incredible. And what you're seeing, you know, Georgia Tech was neck and neck up until that first time out, that first commercial break. But this is what is Louisville so dominant in it's every part of their game. There's not a flaw. It's, it's up to you to hang with them until the end. Bertolino looking for some fingertips. And she got him, they say. Point Georgia Tech. 
after that touch call, and that one player for Louisville denied that it was a touch. That's what you always look for. And right away, PK was like, yeah, guys, I touched it. Peg Van Kong and Reese Robbins forming that block there. Now some subs in for Louisville. And Bella D'Amico returns to serve and at the center position for Georgia Tech. Block from Anna Bozy. Point Georgia Tech. Bozy with two kills and three blocks in this first set. So you watch how the slot attack PK going all the way around. That's opening it up. That inside back row attack from Jones. Just Bozy all over it. Jack is trying to claw their way back. De Beer. And off the chest of Bertolino. It's got to go over. It does. Scott goes to De Beer. And what a sharp angle, and it's long. Beautiful scramble and effort. Scott delivered a money set, by the way, for DeBeer to hit. That was a back set and a triple block from Georgia Tech to try to close it. Nice job. Good volleyball. Yellow Jackets trying to claw their way back into this first set. A 3-0 run. But Louisville still two points away from taking the first set here on the road. And what you identify right now, Louisville's in a two-hitter rotation. You have DeBeer in the front row. They've been using Jones a lot with that inside back row attack to open PK on the slide. That's what you see a lot in this rotation. So if you need a side out and you're Louisville, you're looking to DeBeer. You're like, okay, DeBeer, go ahead and finish this out. We know you can do it. Throw her up a ball. Third team All-American two years ago. Again, missed those 12 matches with an injury last year. But two years ago in this building, she had 21 digs. That was a career high for her. And she's, again, we go back to the term well-rounded. That is such a focus for Coach Buzz Boom Kelly, and, and that's why they are so difficult to beat. As you see two Georgia Tech alums dancing it out, <laughs> yes. They're very difficult to beat because Coach Buzz Boom Kelly recruits all around volleyball players that actually know how to play the game, not just a lot of times you go after that athlete that is like, oh, look at that high jump, but you add that volleyball piece, been raised in the game, playing volleyball young, knowing how to work the chess part, the mind game. That's what Coach Buzz Boo Kelly really tries to recruit for. So Bella D'Amico from Westerville, Ohio. Still serving for Georgia Tech as they try and get a little closer in this first set. Glock. To PK, point Louisville. What was that you were saying about PK on the slide? I'm loving it. She's going in that inside slide, so out of a timeout. Drop her a little bit inside. You know Bertolino was going to go out to the pin, not able to jump back in. Nice change of play there. And now Ellie Glock, the redshirt sophomore, serving for the set. Sandin. Fozy keeps the Jackets alive. The so middle production has been so shocking, Keely, hasn't it? <laughs> that is the word, Wiley. This is shocking, but this is why you trained. Every practice, you always get exposed when you play different teams. What do you need to work on? Coach Coley has done an excellent job getting her middle offense going. Now Bianca Bertolino earns an overpass. Bozy, terminal again. She now has seven points in this set, Keely. What did she eat for breakfast? I'm loving it, getting Anna Bozy going, taking reps, getting the start, because the middle Liv Mogridge is out with a lower body injury. She's worked her way in her game. It's pretty special just to see her blossom in front of our eyes all season long. Well, we saw Louisville win nine of 11 points. That got them in position to take this first set. They're still in a good spot. They've got two more set points. But the Jackets have now won five of the last six. What's changed for Georgia Tech? I really think Georgia Tech enjoys playing volleyball when the pressure is off. You know, there's a, a freedom. And, I, you know, Ben, I've been top, and I've been working my way yes. to the top on different teams. There is a freedom when you can go out and play the game. You look at the smiles. You just go out and compete because when you face a top-ranked team that's above you, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So the stress is off. 
I love the middle attention with the setters getting that going because it's opening up that stress relief for the pin attack for Georgia Tech. And meanwhile, Louisville, they play with pressure every day. Now, why do you think they're so successful dealing with that pressure, that target on their back? When you go to Louisville and when you have a coach that won a national championship, you know what to expect. Every day, day in and day out, you don't take a mental day off. Bertolino serving, and she's got another ace. The Yellow Jackets trailed 23-17. They've got to survive one more set point. They've already won three. Coach Collier is like, Q, we got experience on our side as well. You're looking at Bear Tolino on the Argentine national team. And this time a good pass for Scott. PK is blocked. Out of system, a free ball over. D'Amico to Bozzi. Near the net. And point Georgia Tech. <laughs> wow. What a comeback of team effort. Starting with amazing serve by Bear Tolino. Just trying to keep it going. Impressive job. And if I'm Georgia Tech fans, I'm like, guys, this is first set. You got to keep this energy for the rest of the match. Crowd has come back to life. Bear Tolino gets it on the back line. And now Georgia Tech has set point. A 5-0 run. You look at players like Bear Tolino, like De Beer. So calm and steady in their game. Out of a timeout, ripping it, and then when you need to create a run, Bertolino is doing that. Three aces for Bertolino in this set. Make it four, and Georgia Tech steals, robs the first set with a 6-0 run to close it out. And those are moments where you want to get better, and that drives you to practice. So now Anna DeBeer, one of three team captains, will serve to begin the second set. And PK flushes it down. And for Louisville, Keeley, how do you handle the emotional swing that you just underwent? You're up 24-20, and you lose the set 26-24. Louisville, you see them even how they come out. They're just calm and steady, and they trust how they compete. They look around. We know what we do in practice every day. Let's just go out and perform and see if Georgia Tech can hang and put multiple sets together because it takes three to beat Louisville. That's hard to do. That time Kong was blocked. Big swing from Looper. Nice dig from Pimentel. Mendez off her back foot. Looper goes off speed. Mendez. Bozy in the middle. Point Georgia Tech. Anna Bozy. She is on fire. Loving the risk taking that you're seeing with both setters. D'Amico going, okay, Bozy, we got PK in front of you. At least we know it's not going to be a double block. Let's go ahead, risk the one on one. Georgia Tech coming up with the kill. There's Alina, who authored that 6 0 run, drops a dart down the line. Oh, incredibly done. Staying with the jump top. Bertolino, a lot of times she'll lay off and she knows her rhythm, but she is feeling it today. Five aces already in this match. Kong blocked. Looper trying to go deep. <laughs> Pimentel with a dig. And a block that time. Iko Jones pounds her chest. <laughs> trying to get her teammates going. Awesome. Iko Jones getting up. She wants to take the match on her shoulders. Like, guys, go ahead and set in front of me because I'm going to be a wall. And <laughs> they will try and wipe up the court on the back near side of the Georgia Tech half of the floor. Now play resumes, and Scott's serve is long. And now a shuffle. The Andrew Pierce comes in to replace Posey. And Paula Pimentel will serve. Pimentel with five digs in this match. And a block. DeAndre Pierce along with Tamara Otene. The Georgia Tech block is in town tonight.
That's the equivalent when you play basketball. You just got dunked on and then you come back and, and dunk on your other opponent. I'm loving it. Pimentel just long. Georgia Tech fans don't like the call. Claudio Pinheiro ushering Coach Collier to go for the challenge card, and she will. So Georgia Tech will challenge this call. Now, the official was right on top of it. That was his corner. Sadly, my monitor was right in the way. I couldn't see it live. I saw it live. I don't think my eyes are good enough. <laughs> so you're saying line I'll, judges at yes, your future profession? No, I, I will defer. Let's take a look at what video shows us. Now, Keely, I just, I don't know what the level of indisputable evidence is to overturn it. I'm thinking that might be the only shot we have. And from that view, it looks like it was slightly long. Coach Michelle Collier in her huddle. I mean, that's pretty tight, so well, it we, all depends where you are. And I, I don't think our viewers can see the shot you're looking at right now. Oh. Here, here we can take a look at it. Here's <laughs> your, that was in your, your own special monitor. I'm special. Is that what you're saying, Why? I'm saying New Jersey's in the rafters, so therefore you're special. <laughs> the dropping in, I mean, here we go. This is a good shot. Again, he's right on top of it. What do you think, Gilly? They ever turn this I'm thing? thinking it's, it's going to stand because it's probably inconclusive unless you were, like, zoomed up right on the line to see if there's any blue between the white of the line and the ball. But I'm thinking this call will stand. And there's some school of thought when it comes to re replay review in a lot of sports that if, if it's taken this long to try and determine, maybe that tells you it's inconclusive. Right. Georgia Tech, they have not defeated Louisville since 2016. That was the year before Coach Danny Busboom Kelly was hired. They had a couple of big wins early this year, Keeley, against Ohio State and Penn State. But for the most part, so far through the ACC schedule, they've beaten the teams they're supposed to beat and, you know, haven't had a crack at Louisville yet, obviously. And they were swept by Pitt, the other team near the top of the standings. And the difference, you have a Georgia Tech, they're a very fiery team, and Coach Buston Kelly recognized that. They fight hard, they, uh, they ride momentum for a while, and then with Louisville, you have such control of your game, you don't see that up and down as much. So these long checks and delays is really good for the Louisville side because Georgia Tech is looking to ride any type of gym momentum to stay strong in the match. So the serve is long for Pimentel. Point Louisville, here's Iko Jones. Off the tape. Otene, long, point Louisville. That was a right idea. Louisville, I mean, excuse me, Otene not able to get on top of that ball, sending that one long, but a great set. Nice low and flat from D'Amico. You talked about the defense being a factor, Keely. Both teams right now hitting below 200 in the match. Louisville's top 15 in the country on the season in the hitting percentage. All that is is we watch a lot of video on you. On you. <laughs> we know where you like to go. DeBeer is blocked. Point tech. You know, as a player, when you're watching video with your staff or coaches, you're like, okay, some teams you almost know you're going to beat. You show up and go hard. But there are some teams that you have to lock in for. And as a player, you know it. So you can see the attention to detail coming out for both teams. Suarez served way long. Freshman from Brazil, one of two freshman Brazilians on this Georgia Tech team. The other, Larissa Mendez. Suarez, her playing time has increased considerably in the last month. And Coach Collier told us, you know, given you have a senior center and a freshman center, I think there's less pressure for the freshman coming off the bench than in that starting role. There's a Phil Manyang with an absolute fireball. This is something we have not seen from Manyang, this slide attack. You, this is why you work in practice. I can't get over it. The evolution of your team and playing together happens only in practice. <laughs> Speaking of slide attacks, 
How about Kara Cressy that time from the middle spot? You got sick, sick, your redshirt sophomore going up said, hey, I can do it too. And now Cressy serving six foot six, second in the country in hitting percentage. 459 coming into this match. There, Toledo gets some hands, point Georgia Tech, and Keely, just reading your body language and what you've been saying, is it safe to say you're seeing stuff from Georgia Tech that we have not seen this year? Correct, and it's going to the 6-2, really, it's really helped, because you have players like Berta Lino on the outside, she's normally with a close block set up right in front of her, committed over, now she has a little movement to work with. Tough first touch, and that's a point for Georgia Tech. Serve and pass, right? Serve and pass, and the wave, it's an emotional wave. Georgia Tech will ride, though only for them, they just hope they can ride it all the way to the end. Louisville, you just get back to what you know you can do well is that pass. <laughs> PK, oh, today with the dig. Can the Jackets get it back over? No. Point Louisville, and a big swing that time from Peg Ron Kong. PK coming up with a beautiful attack. That scramble play between the setter, watch it running off. Wins the scramble play between, second ball contact between the setter and anyone else. The setter has the right of way of the mind call. She was in the rotation for Louisville last year, but PK really has to do a lot more. And Alfredo Manyang continues to put up points for Georgia Tech. That's her third kill. Manyan getting up 6-3 on that. Even if it was a tight ball, she's able to make up with speed, catching the tool off the block. If you're coming in to face Georgia Tech, Keely, you're not expecting Anna Bozzi and Abedo Manyan to combine for 11 points so far in this match. I mean, that's just not going to be on the scouting report, that's, is it? You're right. That's not something you watch in video. And Georgia Tech knew exactly that. If you're Coach Buzzboom Kelly and staff, you're watching previous matches, and Coach Collier says, we're going to have to do something different in order to pull off this upset. Tough serve from DeBeer. Bertolino tries to get it over. Mendez makes contact with a quick response by Jones. And a back row swing that time from Tamara Otene. Point Georgia Tech. What a smart swing on an out of system play from Otene. Just taking a shot toward the right back. If anyone was going to play that, it was setter Glock. Even then, it would take her out of the offense. Now Bianca Bertolino has five aces tonight. Wow. What a dip. Terrific pass that began that point for Louisville. Elena Scott sticking a dime on that serve receive pass. You almost want to make her a t-shirt saying hit somewhere else or serve somewhere else because she is an amazing defender and passer. Reigning ACC Defensive Player of the Week. She'll serve. Going soft. D'Amico. Mendez. Point Georgia Tech. Wiley, this is why you set the middle early, is to hold the middle on the other side. That created the seam when D'Amico reversed this ball back. You saw Cressy take a step with Bozy to her right. Mendez with the seam coming up with the kill. Looper <laughs> from above the net dropped a cannonball. Point Louisville. All the yeses right there, Looper. And you can see just so locked in, ready to play. Her game is impressive at all ends of the court. You're going to need the jaws of life to separate these two teams tonight, Keely. They are tangled up in a pretty serious battle in the first half of this match. Looper again. And Deandra Pierce, the middle production continues for the white and gold. Wiley, that's a transition middle attack. You can count almost on a one hand how many times Georgia Tech really runs that previously to this match. You love to see it, and you know for Georgia Tech to even go postseason and make a run, they're going to need to add that middle in the game. Suarez will serve. Lock to Cressy. 
And again, there's Louisville with the answer. This team, three-time defending ACC champions, national runner-up last year. There's really nothing they haven't seen before. This is when you're comfortable in your game. You know how you compete, and you expect every team that you play to bring their A game. Love the response from Louisville. Cardinals and Yellow Jackets trading blows here. Manyan. Louisville there that time to stop the slide. today does not get the tool. They say it was off of Otene's head on its way back down. That evens us at 12. Do you see Louisville making an adjustment here? The, I'm loving the, just a scramble play with Block as a setter getting the setup. And then you have your middle Cressy with the close. It's just more steady play. They trust their game, getting the middles involved, but you don't see the roller coaster of emotions of fear with the Louisville side. And Tamara Otene right there to answer back. That's her fifth kill tonight. And then you almost feel like a 10 pound weight off the Georgia Tech side because they're used to being, on the, what Louisville's experiencing right now is what we see every single team in the ACC come in and play their best game. DePier says, I'll take that. Point Louisville, and I, the Cardinals needed that. They needed that from their seniors. Like triple, no problem. Go ahead, just give me a view. I'm gonna go deep corner on that hit. How many players in the country can take on a triple block like that? You know, De Beer, one of the best things, not only she has power, but the precision. Her hand control is insane. She's able to place it with such crisp precision. Cross court, Bertolino tries to roll it. Bertolino again, and she notches the point for the Yellow Jackets. If you're Georgia Tech, you have to take control of your game, say what's working for us. It's the quick ball to the outside, setting the middles in transition and getting some type of right side action. Bertolino one on one, chances are she's coming up with that kill. Deandra Pierce serving. Looper with the pass, block, a little give and go. Suarez, tough serve, and a block that time from PK. There was no place to go. You had Setter Suarez coming all the way in on that tight ball. It was obvious she was going Bozy in the middle. PK all over that clamp. Preseason, all ACC, entering her senior year. Finally getting a chance to be in that starring role. And a free ball. Mon Young playing the match of her season in Keeley. Georgia Tech is coming off a match against Syracuse where Mon Young had a season high 10 kills. And with that, she's got a little more confidence here. Georgia Tech leading 15 14. Set number two the Yellow Jackets and the Cardinals. A heavyweight fight. Delightful night of volleyball so far. Plenty more to come. And Keely Abedo Manyang, who has been in a reserve role for most of the season for the Yellow Jackets, she's putting together what is shaping up to be her best performance of the year. When you come off the bench, four kills on eight swings, hitting 375, you're doing a good job coming up with that major swing to head us into timeout. Debeer blocked. She beat the triple block once. Couldn't beat that one. You know how they, at the end of the season, they go MVP, most valuable player, most improved. The most improved skill for Georgia Tech is the middle transition and blocking attention to detail. You're loving that improvement. Where's Glock going? To the middle. I do it too. And there's a point for the Cardinals, Iko Jones. <laughs> I mean, Iko Jones up the gut in that serve receive pattern is one on one. You're going to put your money on Jones getting that point. Lovely, lovely. Into the beer. Nine double doubles this year. What a dig from Scott. Looper trying to cash it in, and she deposits it. Point Cardinals. You can see Looper working the exact same shot that DeBeer had with the triple block, saying, I know where the court is open. Let me just take that high and deep to find the open spot. Got 
down the line. Bozy, she can't be stopped. Incredible. I mean, you got Bozy not expecting to get much playing time this year, filling in for an injury, but now taking ownership of her role as the middle, coming up with huge kills for this Georgia Tech squad. She is tied for the match lead with those six kills. A rifle serve from Bertolino, equally impressive dig from Scott. Bozy. Lock for Georgia Tech. Another dig from Elena Scott. Wow. From the right side that time, Jones can't finish it. Otene wins it for the Yellow Jackets. That was one of our best points of the night. Just what did we just see right there, Wiley? The scramble, the digs, Elena Scott, and then finish it off a back bump set on the money from D'Amico, right to her outside hitter, Otene. Smiled all around, that's right. You say nice set on that, D'Amico. Looper, <laughs> and look at that stare that time from Michael Jones. She glared right at Jared and Looper saying, I know what you're talking about. And Wiley, that is how you respond and cut momentum. Looper, what a competitor. You are fun to watch. Mendez, man, it's just back and forth, back and forth. And the side out seem automatic right now, Keely. <laughs> I'm loving this volleyball that we're seeing. You have that one-on-one -on -one saying, okay, I can do it too, Looper. Taking the rip is Mendez. Paula Pimentel. Looper. <laughs> <laughs> Charity Looper. She is not messing around. The best part of that attack was the walk away, eye contact. Looper looked over. Watch how she comes down. The hit's amazing. And then walk away like, that's right, that's right. Her father, Curtis, running backs coach for Missouri. They're playing Jordan tomorrow. He's just down the road. And that attack is long, no hands. Both of them thought she got him, point Louisville. Woo, what a match we have. That's what you got to do to the end. 19-19, Coach Collier taking a much needed timeout just to gather her team because now you can act, you believe you can do this. So a timeout here on the floor called by Georgia Tech and the next point will put us at the 20 point threshold. You look inside that Louisville huddle and we were talking about Charity Looper has got a match best eight kills. Her father's the running backs coach from Missouri, right Keeley? Missouri's playing Georgia tomorrow in Athens. And the night before a big game like that, I'm sure it's a lot of film study, it's a lot of meetings with players. You'd be hard pressed to tell me he doesn't have this match somewhere on his phone in his pocket, right? You know, I almost want to ask him and be like, are you somewhere secretly exactly. in O'Keefe Gym right now? Because your daughter is putting on a performance. Well, either way, I know Curtis Loop, wherever he is, is proud of what he's seen from his daughter Charity, her first year at Louisville. And I mean, to your point, Keeley, this entire crowd is behind Georgia Tech. It's as hostile an atmosphere as you're going to find. I mean, Coach Busboom Kelly stressed to us in our conversation this week with her how mentally tough this match was going to be. And I know Louisville dropped that first set with a 6-0 run. They nearly had it, but boy, they are not showing any signs of weakness. The difference that you're seeing from last year to now is that it's cold in here. Yes. You don't have to worry about the humidity. <laughs> you're not going to get the delay. Plenty of air conditioning to go around. So that delay last year actually helped Louisville because Georgia Tech was up two sets. Yes. So that's what you expect right now. Like Louisville, very confident in what they can do as a team. It's up to Georgia Tech to maintain the endurance to the end and the mental capacity to say we can do this and stay together and actually do it. So tied at 19, Iko Jones. Coach Busman Kelly says she has come out of her shell in her five years at Louisville, but a special person, one of their best leaders. Third year as a captain. Oh, today. Sharp angle, 10 foot line, point, Georgia Tech. Out of a timeout, you have a spin set slightly off the net. D'Amico popping that ball slightly tight. You just have enough vision. Otene can take extreme sharp angles because of her snap on the ball. Nice put away. 
Big smile there for the senior. And Gilly, I've got to imagine both these teams, they've got a lot of sweeps on the resume so far. I mean, they've cruised to some victories this year. There's got to be a part of you as a, as a player that gets fired up when you, you face a top 10 opponent and then you're in the match and it's everything you expected. As DeBeer into the net, but it's kept alive. Crowd thought there were four touches. Nice dig from DeBeer. You play on. Looper <laughs> gets the hand. Charity Looper. Nothing is free. Two of the best defensive teams in the nation, not only in the ACC, but nation. Picking that ball up, Louisville, keeping the play going, and then Looper, bravo, putting it away. And no challenge there on that potential fourth touch. So tied at 20. Charity Looper at the line. Tough serve. Pretty good pass from Bertolino. Great dig. On the slide in the middle, Deandra Pierce. That has been the bread and butter for Georgia Tech tonight. And they hadn't even brought that out of the cupboard up until this evening all season. Just when you need a point, this is the confidence Georgia Tech's developing with Pierce and Bozy in the middle, saying we need a point, we can find one in the middle. Pierce has four kills. Tough serve, Motene. And point, Georgia Tech. It's a great dig by Camden Schrand to keep it alive, but the Yellow Jackets now have a two-point edge in the second set. Beautiful pass, but that's just a wall going up. Man Young and Pierce with a close. Georgia Tech volleyball playing at a high level today. The Yellow Jackets have not beaten Louisville since 2016. They've lost just eight matches in this building, Keeley, since about the middle of 2019. And Louisville accounts for about half of them. <laughs> <laughs> What's the message right now in that Cardinal huddle? You know, I think Louisville's serve receive is much better right now. You saw that last pass was on the money. I think you get your middles involved as much as possible. Between the two, PK and Cressy, that inside slide attack really has been working for them. Or like you can add on the push a little fade away in front of the setter. Something with a little motion but not too far. I think Louisville can find a lot, a lot of offense there. And Georgia Tech has gotten to this spot because they've gotten production from unexpected sources tonight, Keeley. You know, we had a graphic ready to tease the big uh, three-headed monster of Otene, Bertolino, and Mendez, but we had to take an audible. A different big three tonight, Bozy, Manya, Pierce. You know, they're averaging, I don't know, about a little over one kill per set. They have combined for 15 kills tonight. For 14 kills tonight. Coach Collier and staff knew that they are going to have to do something different to have a chance. And wow, just getting these three players involved offensively, I think they're giving them a chance. Oh, today still serving after Louisville takes their first time out of the second set. Going deep. Schran with the pass. Scott sets. DePier scores. like take a deep breath. I just love the way DeBeer competes. Her face doesn't change, good or bad. She knows she can take over a match that time. Out of system ball, going high into the hands. Four kills and four digs the night for DeBeer. And now serving, Briggy Petrenko. Suarez goes middle, Pierce, what a dig from Looper. <laughs> She pulled out the looper scooper that time. But the Cardinals can't keep it alive. Looper scooper, I think you got one in there. She's a digging machine back there, but just not enough to keep the rally going. Pierce, two big swings. This one in serve receive, incredible. Georgia Tech trailed 24-20 in the first set before rattling off a 6-0 run. This time they've got the edge here late, and here comes Liz Patterson, the service specialist. To DeBeer. Glock goes right back to her. Manyang gets the tool. Set point Georgia Tech and a roar from Smiley. When Time you out shift Louisville. to a 6 2, you add Manyang to the mix. Her nickname is Smiley, and this player is fearless. Feeling it today. Team play you're seeing on the Georgia Tech side. 
Georgia Tech now hitting over 300 in this match, Keeley. 17 kills in this second set. Louisville hitting below 200. The Cardinals on the season hitting 286 this year. That's 11th nationally. What has Georgia Tech done defensively to throw the Cardinals out of their game? I think they're doing an excellent job getting the block set up. So you see DeBeer, we've seen her with three blockers when it's out of system, but doing a nice job getting the block set up. And Louisville knows that Georgia Tech's number one in the ACC in digs per set. Every kill is earned. I like the high hands from Louisville going deep into the hands, what you're seeing with DeBeer. But again, if you can get your middles going, it's going to take a lot of pressure off De Beer and Looper on the outside. And one of the pillars for Coach Michelle Collier in her program, she recites it all the time. This is now her 10th season at Georgia Tech. Off speed doesn't score on us. It just doesn't happen. That, that is one of her mantras when she talks about her defenses. If you're going to score against us, you're going to have to do it with force. And I'll tell you what, Paola Pimentel and the rest of this Georgia Tech defense has bought into that. That's why that dig number is so high. Yeah, we haven't mentioned Pimentel in the left back. So Elena Scott does a fantastic job for Louisville, but Pimentel, anything hard at her, she takes it as like a game saying, hey, bring it harder, I got you on the next one. Liz Patterson serving, crowd on their feet. White pom-poms waving in the air. And that serve is long, point Louisville. And now they'll try and pull off a similar rally that we saw from Georgia Tech. And you almost want to set. play the music. Dun, dun, dun. You got Jones <laughs> in the back row for Louisville. That's the blocker you want to stay away. I would risk it with Manyang on the right side attack. That's where I'm going if I'm Setter Suarez. Bertolino, Suarez, Manyang, set belongs to Georgia Tech. They stole number one. And they closed out number two. Number 10, Georgia Tech. ...of just going strong and just saying, hey, we need your passion, stay through. So here we go, third set. First two have been a couple of doozies. And Bianca Bertolino begins it, a tough serve. Helena Scott equal to it. Pimentel on a free ball. Block to the middle, <laughs> PK to the core of the earth. That's where I'm going, right? <laughs> so you know it's working for you all match long. You, you saw the middle not getting set much in that second set. I love the change of the offense and you know what? Let's go back, get our middles involved. You, me, Jules Verne, center to the earth. Oh, today. And a block and a roar to match from Anna Bozy. Nicely done, Bozy on the close. When you finally block the hitter that's been destroying you, it feels like an extra little momentum builder. 11 points for Bozy, six kills, five blocks. Looper, they continue to go to the well with their outside, and that time <laughs> it's a block from Kira Cressy. You have Cresty with the close. Looper got that set up. The majority of the ball was in her hands. And I love that competitive trash talking without talking. The stare down walk back said, yep, that's right. Kara Cresty, a redshirt sophomore. And Coach DBK says her biggest area for growth is in her block. And the only way to do it is with game reps. Pimentel has to lob it over. And a sneak attack there from Glock. And now a block. Point Louisville. This is where you trust your game. The composure from Louisville has not changed one bit. They stayed strong, positive. It's the Georgia Tech right now side team. Can we hang on to the end? Do we have the game to last? And when you're trying to pull off an upset like this, Gil, I mean, you were on a team that beat a top five Nebraska team just before coach Danny Busboom Kelly walked into the door. No, and I, Lincoln. she was she on was that, on that. She, she was on, on the that court, team. Yeah. Okay, I take it back. Her freshman year there. That serve is long. For Georgia Tech, how do you try and keep your mind in the moment? Because obviously, you know the score. You're up 2-0 over number three, Louisville. You, you haven't beaten them in seven years. I mean, how do you keep it from your mind just getting away from it? You just have to play one ball at a time, and you have to really rely on what you do day in and day out in practice. Practice, that, that mindset that you have going in will really pay off right now. 
Cressy down the line. And Coach Buzz Boom Kelly, she says, for Kara, the biggest key is confidence. So she's showing some here in this third set. That's it. You got PK going in the middle and then Cressy on that slide attack. That's how you do it. Way to adjust your strategy, Coach B DBK. So she was a she was the, the setter opposing you, is that she right? She was the setter, and then later in her career, she turned with the national championship team. She was the Libra. Mm. She can do it all. Iko Jones, Bertolino trying to keep it alive. Pimentel pumps it over. A free ball chance. Another dig, Suarez. Bertolino drops it into the soft spot. And what a momentum swing for Georgia Tech. I really think Georgia Tech needed that play to wake up the crowd. The crowd was playing a little tight. Scramble all the way back from Bertolino, and then she finished it off with the short tip in the back row attack. She almost took out a ball boy in the process. Speaking of well-rounded, Bianca Bertolino, not only five aces in the match, she's got 12 digs tonight. To Beer. Long. And we're even at four. Yeah, Bertolino five on your screen. So she was the Libro for the Argentine national team, and now she's an outside hitter, has comes in with a lot of experience, really worked her jump top spin, served this summer with the team. Great job of handling that serve by Scott. And we got a net violation against Louisville. Boy, Georgia Tech. And you saw Bertolino take an approach, recognize that she was early, took some pace off that ball. The blockers got a little too anxious, reached over, caught the top, caught the top of that net. Oh, today. Glock goes back row. Point Louisville. Iko Jones had just enough. Manyang couldn't handle it. There you go, when you have Jones asking for in the back row. She had a triple block. Man Young actually thought she was tied into the net to try to throw that ball back. But so stable is Jones. And now serving for the Cardinals. This is Aiden Bartlett, one of the team captains. To Beer, oh, she saw the door open and she blasted right through it. De Beers like one block. I haven't seen that all match. Let me just go ahead, put it up nice and fast before the block arrives. So Bartlett out of Livenworth, Kansas. Tough serve. Manya gets the tool. Point Georgia Tech. I love talking to Coach Collier about each of her players. With Manya, she just said right away, the kid's fearless. Goes up, takes a rip, not scared of any block in front of her. And that time, out of system, still going strong. Pierce. On the slide. Point Louisville. Kong with her sixth kill of the night on just 13 swings. Block changing up, going slightly forward, us off the net, saying, PK, I know you're going to be there. Let me go ahead and reverse this slide out to the antenna. And now, Briggy Petrenko from Hungary. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. Good pass that time. And Man Yang blocked. Kong to Beer. Showing the block for Louisville now. You saw her middle PK just pointing to the beer, to pointing down, saying that was all you on that block. De Beer, so competitive. And Petrenko just long point Georgia Tech. Now Ellie Glock coming back in. So if you're Georgia Tech right now, you have to go what's been working. I would run the middle in transition. It's still not what Louisville is expected, expecting you to do, even though it's been working for you. For Louisville, you got Jones back in the front row, runner up the gut, or PK. That right side middle combination on your offense is nice. Lock. Jones in the middle goes soft. Good reaction from Mendez. Bernalino! 
A cut shot. When you bring in international volleyball play, that's what you've seen Bertolino. Just able to know, I have a big block in front of me. Let me go ahead and work the shot, recognizing Debeer was the off blocker, leaning a little bit to her right. Locked at eight, and that's what we call filling up a stat sheet. <laughs> Look at those numbers for Bertolino tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Kong again. <laughs> Wiley, not too many people can hit the angle that you just saw PK. She went about five feet off the net with a hard cut shot on a slide. That was beautiful. Yeah, Coach Busman, Kelly challenged her to be more terminal this year. That's how you do it. D'Amico, miscommunication that time, a free ball for Louisville. And the extra touch that time from Looper. Still in play. And Kong finishes it. Keith putting food on her plate right now, right? Oh, no, but the call here. Yeah, it's going to be Louisville ball, or a Louisville point Louisville, rather. I mean, PK's been lights out, and her setter Glock knows exactly I can get her in transition high, low, doesn't matter. PK's fast getting up. But the crowd wanted a net violation maybe there. Bertolino blocked, and now the Cardinals feeling it a little bit, and that was the one area Coach DBK wanted them to work on was their block in this final month before the NCAA tournament. And in this third set, it's given them an 11-8 lead. We will step aside. Cardinals, Jackets, O'Keefe Jim. Anna DeBeer, who serves out of the timeout. Oh, what a dig from Bertolino. Georgia Tech extends the point. Glock to Looper. Tomiko Fini Mendez, the freshman, and she wins the point. The defense for Georgia Tech was all the difference. That's a never say die defensive layout by Bertolino to keep the rally going. And then Mendez coming up with a major kill in transition. Georgia Tech, right now, to have the, endu the endurance to last needs the fans. You need this energy. It's the seventh man. You've got to use it. If the fans only recognize they, they're going to have to carry the load emotionally. So after some court maintenance, Bianca Bertolino, five aces in this match. They all came in the first set. Wow. <laughs> what a set. Ellie Glock. <laughs> and look at Iko Jones just looking deep into her eyes saying, that's what I'm talking about. All the yeses right there. Going up Glock, one-handed save. But, you know, that almost was on the money. It could have been a two-handed, beautiful, in-system set the way Glock placed that set. Not bad for a first-year setter replacing Raquel Lotharo. All-American a year ago. One of those Cardinals that moved on. Oh, today. Great dig from Scott. Another All-American is back. D'Amico, middle. And she and Bozy out of sync there. If you're middle Bozy, you just have to expect it. I don't think that was that connection of I was expecting to get the ball in that transition play. Louisville now with a three-point edge, a four-point edge, I beg your pardon. D'Amico goes to Mendez. Point, Georgia Tech, Marisa Mendez. Haven't talked a whole lot about her tonight. But she's had double-digit kills in nearly two-thirds of her matches this year. Mendez, one of those freshmen, come in with incredible experience, plays with Olympians in her hometown team in Brazil. Just knows what to expect, not intimidated in, at the block that she's looking at all match long. And she's been stuffing the stat sheet, too. Five kills, three digs, three blocks. Block, middle. Louisville, point. All day. If you're Louisville, you get that ball somewhere close to the middle that you're able to set it, you're finding either Cressy or PK, whoever's close. That's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. I love that Cressy took that ball cross body for the cutback. Nicely done. Now this will be Camden Schramm out of Kentucky. Villa Hills. 
Looper. <laughs> oh my goodness, Otene somehow. Another great dig from the Jackets. And Otene long. Couldn't catch the hands. Point Louisville. 15 to 10. Incredible digs we just saw. And then Otene trying to avoid the block, but you don't have many angles to work with when you're slightly off trying to go around 6'6 six, six, Cressy. Miko goes to Mendez. It's going to be Looper. Mendez again. Oh, what a dig from Schrand that time. A free ball for the Jackets. Tight to the net. Cross court. Oh, today. But the point to Louisville. As it went long. And now the Cardinals up 16 to 10. The adjustment out of a timeout. Louisville's doing a good job getting a double block in front of Otene and then setting the middle so you can see the game shift with Louisville to create this lead. 3 0 run for the Cardinals. Otene trying to stop it and she gets the hands this time. Point Georgia Tech. That's where you take a deep breath. Okay, I was able to get a good set out to the line. Let me go ahead and hit, change my shot, hit line, catch a little fingertips on the way out. Now, Eloisa Suarez will come in as the setter for Georgia Tech. She will also serve. <laughs> Looper. Oh, my goodness. It's just long. But, I mean, that was a howitzer. That set by Elena Scott was on the money, almost like a first team All-American setter delivering that, delivering that ball. Beautifully done. And then we're going to see if this ball was in or out. It was almost fun just to watch. So I'm glad we get to see it again. you got to think, Keely, if you make a set like that, you say, come on, give me the assist on that. Yeah, you can say play. it. I, I, I look at a player <laughs> like Scott saying, you could have a long career. And now with a professional team, even we're getting a team Atlanta vibe here in Atlanta with Tori Dilfer as the setter. So that's a fellow first team All-American from Louisville coming to Atlanta to play in the pro team. So Scott has a long career if she wants it. Yeah, Tori Dilfer, setter for the Louisville team in 2021. We'll take a look at this replay review. I don't think that view is going to show us a whole lot. That's just fun to watch in slow motion, regardless if we can see the line or not. We're checking hands here. And Looper taking on that triple block. And that's where you saw the right hand of Pierce, Georgia Tech's middle, number one on your screen, just catching it. This call will get reversed. And it is. So point Louisville, 17-11. The Cardinals have not been swept, Keeley, since the national championship game last year. And we mentioned earlier, but number one in white, DeAndre Pierce, she was on that Texas team. Did not play in that match. But again, the Cardinals, they've been down 2-0 before this year and come back to win. Not phased, and they're in position to force a fourth set. And an overpass. Otene. And that's going to be double contact against the Yellow Jackets. They're a little bit of a carry that time. What do you got on that, Keely? That's hard to call because Coach Collier was like to the up official, your back was toward the player, but the delay in the arms was just enough for the up official to call that carry. 18-11. Into the net. Boy, Georgia Tech. And we saw the Yellow Jackets put together a 6-0 run to win the first set. They could use one sooner rather than later in this third. And in this rotation, Cressy's been getting a lot of attempts. So that's the one spot you got to stick a pass, go to her. Block. Cressy blocked. Bianca Bertolino doing it all tonight. Bertolino has one of the best setups. She recognizes where that set was, the approach angle of the middle, and then taking the shot away just so smooth. Block on a run, trying to set for DeBeer. It was perfect. And Anna DeBeer, she just does not miss. She almost wants to, she doesn't trash talk at all. I, I love the way she competes. Just very 
quiet, confident in her game, but that's almost want to go, hey, you're gonna, are you going to close that seam? Because I'm about to rip it. <laughs> that's fun. Keely, I'm going to go on a limb here. Anna DeBeer just reminds me that of that Snoop Dogg meme, he, he don't miss. That's what it's like <laughs> watching Anna DeBeer. Right. I, was, I was debating if I was going to go there. You always go there. I couldn't always. resist it. I knew yes. I could count on you. Yes, always go there, Wiley. Right here, coming up with another block. You got your setter on the solo block, putting it down. She don't miss. Louisville up 20 to 13. Georgia Tech calls their first timeout. The Yellow Jackets looking for what would be a signature win on this 2023 campaign. Let's take a look at what they've accomplished so far. 19-3, the record, number 10 in the polls. And you look at those key losses. Georgia, that match was at home at McCamish Pavilion. Miami came in here behind Grace Lopez, swept the Jackets. And then that loss to Pittsburgh, a match they led two sets to none, much like this one. They couldn't close it out. For that Georgia match, you're right. They played in the basketball arena, McCamish Pavilion. I don't think there's going to be a major match ever played over there if Coach Collier has anything to say about it. So ACC play, top level, get used to O'Keefe Gym because Coach Collier is set on big matches here in her home gym. And we saw Liv Mogridge there in the huddle urging on her team. Mogridge out with, uh, as you said, a lower body injury. There she is wearing the blue t-shirt. But that's about as animated as I've seen Liv Mogridge. She's again, not the most outspoken leader on this team, I suppose, but she was really getting in uh, to her teammates there in a positive way. That's right, one of the best leaders on the court. Her teammates respect her, and it, Coach Collier said it was, if it was up to Liv Mogridge, she'd be on the court yes. yesterday trying to play every single match, but you gotta take it easy, get you back 110% when you come back from an injury. Transfer from North Carolina, Aiden Bartlett serving the senior for the Cardinals, gets play going again. Back row, Otene. Kong goes long. Point Georgia Tech, and subs coming in, Liz Patterson in to serve. And Manyang is back. Liz Patterson serving. Beer the pass. Back to her. Louisville keeps it alive. They can play some defense too. Man Young. Nice touch. Slide. Long, but they got the hands. Point Louisville. PK with her 10th kill tonight. And no argument from Otene. Nice reverse back on this. PK going deep. It came high in Otene, taking her through her hands for that touch. Megaran Kong, known as PK among Louisville players and fans. And the serve long. At this point in the match, you know you're down six, heading in in this third set. For Georgia Tech, it's all about building momentum. Louisville's figured out what, what, where they're successful. That middle attack's been working for them, and then opening up your outside attack. But you got to find the middles. That's where you're getting kills. And you look at what happened in the first set. For Georgia Tech, they got to feel like they have all sorts of wiggle room. They were down 24-20 and rattled off six straight. But as you said, just building momentum if only for the sake of the fourth set for Georgia Tech. Meanwhile, Louisville trying to keep that momentum into the fourth set as that swings off the mark. And boy, Georgia Tech is down to five. You're right, Wiley. That comeback in that first set was pretty dang impressive. Right. Georgia Tech trusts their defense. It's that transition offense where they continue to work on. Yeah, if you join us late, the Jackets stole the first set. Trailing 24 20. Oh and Pegron Kong saying, that's ah, not happening here in set number three. Oh, you almost want to like take that home as a replay. And, like, look at the angle she's hitting this ball at. That hits Mendez only about three feet off the net. That's an angle that not too many players can hit. Tabir will serve.
Punched over. What a dig from Pimentel. Block. Looper. Pimentel keeps it alive. Block goes back to Looper. Point Louisville. Charity Looper refusing to be denied. I'm thinking what we're going to see from Looper as if this heads into four sets, a lot more going high into the hand. She's not scared of the height. She can go high and she doesn't hit low into the arms. I love it. Looper and Kong with 11 kills each. More than half of Louisville's kills tonight. And at the beer, six kills. Serving. Bertolino gets it back over. Mendez. Great dig on the Louisville side. Bertolino drops it over. And Scott can't keep it up. Point Georgia Tech, although Louisville looks like they're going to challenge this one. They're talking about it at least. Cardinals up 23-17 in this set. Coach Buzz Boom Kelly opting to not go for the challenge. But she will get clarification. And you'll take all the clarification you can right now because guess who's up to serve yeah. for Georgia Tech? Bertolino, anything to ice her or slow her down. Into the net. A service error. Now the Cardinals up 24-17. One point away from forcing set four. You can, take, you can do that play with the challenge card, like walk toward it, walk yeah. away, anything <laughs> to get Bertolino out of a rhythm. Do a little ice ice baby. <laughs> Posey. And the set belongs to Louisville. Ica Jones closes it out. The Cardinals have taken the first step Trying to stage a comeback here on the road. Match. The fourth set. Here we go. And it begins with an ace from Anna DePier. What does my, my mom say growing up? She told us we can never start fights. But if you started, you if somebody started it, you better finish it. And you got DePier. I really feel she's got that in her. Like, okay, you started this fight. I'm going to step up and finish it for you. I don't know if that's good parenting advice, but it worked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, it's not necessarily what's right, what's wrong, what's effective, right? <laughs> that's right. In some cases. I never got in a fight. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Only fouled out a bunch yes. in basketball. I took it out there. <laughs> Mendez into the net. And did you see that glare from Anna the Beer before that? serve and she is locked in right now. Debo. That's her nickname. Wow. Oh, what a dig from Scott. Pimentel. Bertolino gets the tool. Boy, Georgia Tech. You have certain players on the Georgia Tech side that can take over a match, and that's Bertolino. She doesn't hit the highest ball, but her ability to work the block and then go back, create a service run, adding the defensive game really can set the tone. Jump serve. Long. The last two times Bertolino has served Keeley, her first serve has been an error, one into the net, and that one just beyond the back line your groove and it's one of those things when you know you carry the pressure and because Louisville's now coming to play a little wake up call after that first set comeback I'm sure Louisville wants it back really fighting hard now D'Amico to Bozy the block that time from Cressy Looper Bozy off the fingertips and it finds Hardwood Wiley that now that's a good sign for Georgia Tech after the mi little miscue early on from D'Amico to Bozy, that set that never got hit dropped to the floor. Bozy took that like, oh, that was my bad. But when you get that bounce back now in the fourth set, that's what's needed. That is one more kill than she had in all of the third set. Six in the first two, shutout in the third. 
And Looper couldn't quite connect properly on that one. Nobody's mad at you, Looper, because you're carrying yeah. that offense on the outside. I know you shake it off, come back with the next swing. Does fatigue become a factor for her at all? That was her 34th swing. Not for her. That's what I figured She's her answer would be. Yeah. Make it 35 swings now and 12 kills. You know, you watch a player like Looper, and I played professionally in Spain for four years. You go, okay, it's all about the bounce back, the maturity in a player, not to get emotional in the air, but the ability to understand what you have to do next and then perform. She's got it. Damon Schramm gets it to roll off the tape. Pierce in the middle, that's the spot, Keely. Fantastic sign for Georgia Tech. This is Coach Collier between the two sets, reminding her team what's been working. Guys, the only reason we got here with two, two, up two sets to zero going into the third was because we did the least predictable thing. And what jumps out to you when you look at the stats for Georgia Tech is how balanced the kill distribution has been. Six different players with at least five kills. Another point for the Yellow Jackets. They've got their first lead in this fourth set. That fearless two in a row. The middle attempt going one to Bozy and then following up by Pierce. That really changes things for Georgia Tech. As a setter, why is it so difficult to keep that top of mind? Why is it something that seems like a lot of coaches need to remind their players? As that's an absolute rejection. Oh, that was pretty. So pretty. Your first on the solo, but a lot of times, it takes time to develop that setter middle connection. And you have Georgia Tech playing with two setters all season long. That takes time and practice to develop. Coach Collier's done an excellent job improving that level of her game, getting the middles involved with both setters. That serve is long from Suarez. And especially when you factor in not just multiple setters, but multiple middles. Because right. Liv Modridge, again, they were hoping to have her back this weekend. We spoke with Michelle Collier this week, and she said, not looking good for Friday. You know, maybe a 50-50 on Sunday. We'll have to see how things play out. As Looper serves. That favors her. Oh, today. <laughs> oh, Elena Scott, that is unbelievable. ACC's leader in digs. Keeps the point alive for the Cardinals. Manyang gets the tool. Abedo Manyang. Now with eight kills tonight. Manyang reversing it, going into the moving blocker as Cressy tried to close that block. But you're right, Elena Scott in left back, you almost, I'm almost gonna, going to make you and ship you the shirt. Hit somewhere else. Yeah. Good touch. Bertolino. Did she get the hands? No. Point to Louisville. But you're right, right, Wiley. She was trying to go high hands into that, trying to get the delay, just catching a little bit under the ball to clear the block. I feel like we've got that, that sensei grasshopper relationship up here. Every once in a while, I'm, I figure it oh, out. Oh, yeah, you got it, man. <laughs> Pierce in the middle. Shran goes to the pier. Pancake Bertolino still alive. Pimentel. Boinks it over. And Kong says, eh, whatever. Great effort. Laying out, keeping scramble balls going. This is what we saw the first two sets. Earning every single kill. Laying out Bertolino with the pancake and getting low is Pierce. But that save by Pete Mentel is why you work on one-handed ball control. PK taking the kill. I thought we might see another bicycle kick. She that was did, fun. She did her Pele impression a couple weeks ago in the match against Miami. Tied at seven, set number four. Bartlett serving. Suarez goes to Pierce. Point Tech in the middles. It feels like that's where Georgia Tech's going to have to go, right, Keely? I'm just loving the change between sets three and four to for Georgia Tech going back to their game plan. We know Louisville wants to camp out on the pin attack, which is the right sides and outsides. And Georgia Tech saying, okay, Pierce and Bozy, if we're gonna do this, it's on you. Just long on the serve there from Deandra Pierce. <laughs> you almost feel the nerves for players going back to serve, mostly on Georgia Tech side, saying like, oh my gosh, we actually could do this. 
Yeah, there were a lot of service errors early for Louisville. Now it seems Jordan Tech's the one who struggles to get those serves in. Manyang beats the block. Abedo Manyang, nine kills in Keeley. She had 10 kills against Syracuse on Sunday. Most playing time she got in a long time. How do you think that opportunity on Sunday has affected her tonight? You just need to get confident again. Manyang took over matches in preseason, but now her confidence is back match time. Watch out. Hong <laughs> blocked solo. Bianca Bertolino. She's giving him the stone cold look too. You know, when I played in Spain and Bertolino's from Argentina, that's a block where you say, cometelo, it's going down. Put that ball. Everybody who speaks Spanish knows what I just said. Wasn't, wasn't bad. To beer. And she says, yeah, I can beat a block too. And I add a little Spanish for Debeer. Dame lo, give me that ball right there. Debeer said, we need a side out. I got one more rotation in the front row. Go ahead and set me, Glock. Tough serve. Mendez, overpass. Back to Mendez. Back row, oh today, what a dig from Scott. This is marvelous tonight. <laughs> Looper slams the door shut. Yes, Looper, chest tall, saying I will finish it. Give me that ball to the outside. Looper, confident and strong on that rip. 13 kills tonight for the junior transfer from UCLA. Serve is long. I'm just flashing back to that last replay from Looper. The block was closed and there, and Looper was still about four inches over on that swing. You're telling me she's got some hops, five I'm foot nine. Bertolino. Great pass from Scott. Oh, today. This has been an incredible night of volleyball. There's no other way to put it. And Marisa Mendez wins that point for Georgia Tech. I don't know if I'm more impressed with the defense or the scramble plays, just a transition on the offense. Loving that, D'Amico going low and flat to Mendez on the right side. And <laughs> Ooh, and a collision that time. Louisville keeps it alive. And now, uh, it is ruled a fourth touch. Point Georgia Tech. On that serve ball, out of the timeout, Bertolino took some pace off that actually ricocheted between two players to cause the first two touches. Wow, wow. Another ace! Bianca Bertolino! Trying to carry the Jackets across the finish line here. And Louisville's forced to call their last time out. This is why you maintain composure in your game. You don't ride the roller coaster in your personal game. Bianca Bertolino plays a lot like Coach Collier. And then we see DeBeer across the way. Just players that are confident. They have control of their game. If they make a mistake, the bounce back is there. And then you saw two missed serves early on. That has not phased Bertolino at all. She continues to elevate her game. And then the leadership just addition, incredible. Louisville, as we said, 46 and two since the start of 2021. They ended the previous season on a 10 match win streak in ACC play. So they have won 56 of their last 58 matches. And Keeley, maybe this is a dumb question. Who has more pressure on them right now? That's a great question. I honestly, I know Louisville has definitely the more pressure. You know, they're Georgia down 2-1 in the match, 15-10. Exactly. To 10, yeah. the, the pressure is definitely on Louisville's side. You almost go through a mentality like, can this 
happen? Is this possible? And I remember when I played, we go up to Nebraska, they're ranked fifth in the nation. You're up two sets, they come back for the next two, you go into the fifth, you look around at your teammates, and you go, guys, we can do this. So with Bierka Bertolino on that service line right now, in that huddle, saying, guys, we're doing this, staying together. Jackets have lost 10 straight since that last win against the Cardinals. Glock, Kong. Oh, today? Point tap. Wow, Wiley. First the dig by Pimentel off of PKs and then out of system on the money. Pimentel doing it Otene on the finish. A 6-0 run for the Jackets. Their second 6-0 run of the night. The first won the first set and it's just off the top of the tape and a service error on Bertolino. But a round of applause coming from this O'Keefe crowd. Well deserved round of applause right there. Biggest runs of the match by number five, Bianca Bertolino. And if Louisville doesn't cut into this lead, you can look at that run right there as the difference. But we're a long way from the finish line. D'Amico. Good block from the Cardinals. <laughs> DeBeer, oh my gosh! Point Georgia Tech out today. But man, Anna DeBeer did everything she could. All the yeses right there from DeBeer laying out to keep that play going. I love the effort. And then Otene with the put away. Looks like a challenge has been requested by Coach Danny Busboom Kelly. What do you think they're looking at here, Kelly? I'm thinking they're looking at an early net violation throughout the play, but I'm sure we'll get a replay just to clarify. Louisville out of timeouts. This does give them a chance to reconvene here, trailing 17 to 11 in the match. Oh, checking out the back row violation. If there was one, I'm seeing Bertolino's toe turned to not clip the 10-foot line. If any part of her toe touched the 10-foot line, it would have been a back row violation but that's why attackers try to turn that left toe to avoid that line touch. Elsewhere in the ACC, we've got a matchup between second place and fourth place, Florida State hosting Pittsburgh. They've gone five sets, the Seminoles up 13 to 12 in the fifth. Oh, let's go, fun. Florida State and Georgia Tech each with two ACC losses. We get a look here again. Each with two ACC losses. Pittsburgh and Louisville each with one, so a win for Florida State and a win for Georgia Tech. you got pretty much a four-way tie at the top. Here comes the call, and it stands. The point belongs to Georgia Tech. Young players that are watching right now, if you're running a back row attack, that's why you turn your front foot sideways to avoid any type, type of touching of that 10-foot line. Paula Pimentel serving. It's long, point Louisville. If you're Georgia Tech, you're in a side out game right now. So you just, you miss a serve, you gotta come back, stick a pass, get a side out. For Louisville, it's pushing point. You have Looper in your front row, one more rotation, but you know your middle's offense has been working for you. Now the freshman, Cam Tran. Great serve. Otene has it blocked. And then a block on Looper. Looper another swing. And she earns the point for the Cardinals. Just kissing that line. It's down to four. We've been seeing Looper try and take deep corner shots throughout the match. This one was an extreme inside cut shot angle. Looper, woo got all around game. Strand again. Oh, today. What a dig from Scott. A joust on the Georgia Tech side. Oh, today, did she get hands? Yes, she did. Point Georgia Tech. Right away, you watch the body language from the block to see block turned to her coach and said, go ahead, challenge that. But there was no hesitation going up, catching the clip in the hands through the seam. Both blockers turned to their coach and said, yup, coach, we touched it. Eloisa Suarez, freshman from Brazil, serving for the Yellow Jackets. Nice serve. 
block, Looper and Louisville. Leaning on Looper here. She's got 15 <laughs> kills, Keely. And that was a shift inside. Watch it inside. She's coming in, creeping in. Haven't seen this all match. Watch me take the same angle. Catch the top of your defense. And now you've got the hottest player on Louisville's side of the service line. And Pierce gets the point from the middle. It's been the story from start to finish, Keely. Georgia Tech's middle production. And that's what Georgia Tech needed to see. Okay, we've done it to get us this lead. Do we still have that middle offense? Finding it again gives you a whole level of confidence. Trying to reach the 20-point mark. Nice save. <laughs> Great save. Scott, another dig. Flock going back row to Looper. Middle, oh! Pierce, point jackets. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wiley, I tell you what, this is why you love going to practice to improve parts of your game. Suarez, freshman setter, has only been playing with Pierce a couple months, and now you see that connection. That's a power swing. And an ace for tomorrow, today. the Yellow Jackets, they can feel it in this building. On the verge of the biggest upset win in O'Keefe. Just the third ever top five win for the Yellow Jackets. If you're looking across the net, you've got to get Krusty this ball on this pass. And we've got a violation of fault on Anna DeBeer. Point Yellow Jackets. Talking to Coach Collier early in the season, she said, we are the strongest in the 6-2. We just have to work to get all elements strong. You are seeing Georgia Tech play the best level of volleyball we've seen all season long. The addition of Man Young on the right side. Suarez getting the middle is impressive. De Beer. Kept it alive. Block. Touches it over. She gets the point. When in doubt, put it in the middle. That's the defense. You go block with her hands as a setter. You have such wrist control. That one, she took a little short, causing that chaos between Pierce coming off and Libro Pimentel trying to pick that up. And just on the back line, a point for Louisville. I think this is one you might as well risk it. You might as well risk your challenge card. Coach Collier ran over, but her bench said, Coach, we think that was it was in. Coach Collier getting the view from our view, Wiley. I thought initially it did look in. I thought so too. I think that looks in to me. Either way, it's a smart time to take a timeout. In a way, you get the delay. You have Louisville coming back on you. Why not? You're not going to take your challenge cards back home. That view, because we can't see the line and the ball, that view will always look like that ball was in. Unless you can see any type, this is probably your better view. Oh, you know what? Oh, wow. That's Coach a lot Collier. closer than I thought. Is that enough to overturn the call, Keely? Wow, that's about as close as you can get. It looked like, you know, you flatten out the ball a little bit. Maybe the shadow caught it. Wow, great camera work, guys. That's about as close as you can get. Yellow Jackets have lost 10 straight to Louisville. seen some blue but then you're like did the ball flatten out just enough to catch a little white I'm not sure Wiley looks like we've got a ruling and they will say it is in they stick with the call one more look here and they're saying that that was the look so 22 16 that really 
defines the match. It's about as tight as you can make it. Portland serving Pierce. Looper, wide right, point tech. 23-16. And I think Coach Buzz Boom Kelly wants to challenge this. Wow, that swing out of the back row. So fast, so fierce. Coach Buzz from Kelly, check, just making sure that ball was not in any part of the white or inside the court because that ball went down really quickly. So it's 23 to 16. And here's a look. That looks out to me, Caleb. And I'm seeing some blue between the ball and the white of the line. So I'm thinking this call will stand. This puts Georgia Tech with only two points away from match point. This is a huge call right now. Yeah, there's definitely blue between that line. Blue of the court. Yep. So the expectation is that this call will be confirmed. Scott Lowry, our lower referee, has the headset off. He's relaying the call. And it will stand with Georgia Tech. Two points away. And Keeley, I know this is a top 10 matchup. But you've been around this Georgia Tech program for a while. This feels like a pretty huge upset. Yes, and the t level of volleyball that you're playing right now is just impressive what's going. And look at that number right there. Since 2021, Louisville 46 and two. And at the bottom, the Yellow Jackets have struggled so mightily to get to that next tier in the ACC. One and eight against those top two teams combined without a win against Louisville. And that serve is long from Liz Patterson. And I think Coach Collier asking if they'll take a look at it. <laughs> but they're both out of challenges, both Florida Tech and Louisville at this point. And then you look across the net. Okay, you just move on to the next ball, and you be like, okay, we got Manyang ma matched up with Devere. If we can run Bozy away on a long ball to get PK out of the block, I'm going Manyang on my right side for the first set. Petranka. Manyang. It's like you called, Keeley. Devere. Wow. Oh, what a touch from O today. Pimentel has to bump it over. And point, PK. 23-18, and a timeout called by Georgia Tech. Transition play off the hands. Bozy just trying to go hard. PK working a little more angle to get that tool off. We've already seen one upset tonight in the ACC down in Tallahassee. Florida State taking out Pitt in five. And Keeley, I can't tell you the last time Pitt and Louisville lost on the same night in ACC play, but I can promise you it's been a long time. A very long time, especially both top ranked for years. So yeah, this is a big night if Georgia Tech's able to get this upset. And you'd be looking at a, a four-way tie atop the ACC standings as Louisville, Pitt, Georgia Tech and Florida State would all be 11 and two with five matches to play. You know, I can't wait for the day that they bring back the ACC oh, tournament. you're telling me. How fun would that be? Or even, heck, just invite those four teams. You know, top <laughs> right. four make yeah. it and just have a weekend out of it. Bianca Bertolino, it was her 6-0 run, Keeley, that really got the Yellow Jackets going. Take a look at what we've seen from her tonight. All Bertolino first doing it with different types of shots early on. The leadership so consistent and steady. Effort, back row, front row, she is locked in today, but it was her serving game that took over the match for Georgia Tech to create the lead. And now the serve coming from Petrenko. Bertolino. Petrenko to the beer. And it is long point tech. And we've got match point. The Yellow Jackets on the cusp of their biggest win inside O'Keefe Gymnasium 
in program history. But first, a few substitutions. You've got Georgia Tech back into that 6-2 rotation with Bella D'Amico, the senior. Mendez, your freshman, 6-4 right side. If you're, I'm going to Jones right now. If I get a ball and I'm Glock the setter, Jones is your go-to player, rider. D'Amico, senior team captain serving. Point Louisville, the Cardinals survive. Iko Jones. And now Anna DeBeer will serve with the match on the line. Like Bertolino is for Georgia Tech, that is Anna DeBeer for Louisville. Ready for this moment? She can do this. Cardinals on the brink. D'Amico. Closing in the middle. It is disbelief in O'Keefe. 